Hello, welcome to grade 9 mathematics. This class is more of a review. We are going to go through some questions. Yeah, so we start off with the first question. If you can't remember, I gave you these questions to work on some time ago. So we saw the first question and then we see how well we did. The first question is P equals factor factors of 30, Q equals multiples of 5 less than 40. Find P intersection Q and then represent the information on a Venn diagram. The B part, a trader saved 200 Ghana cities for 3 years at 12% simple interest per annum. What would be the total amount in the trader's account at the end of the third year? The last part of the question, evaluate 4.56 multiplied by 3.6 all over 0.12 and leave your answer in standard form. Okay, so we've taken the first question. So we start off by writing the factors of 30. We all know factors of 30. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and then 30 itself. Q. Multiples of 5 less than 40. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. P intersection Q. We all know what it means. Common members of P and Q. That gives us Yes, list them. Okay, five, mm -hmm. 10, mm -hmm. 15, and the last number, 30, of course. All right, very good. So we represent the information on the Venn diagram. And there's a simple Venn diagram for this information. So we put the members of Q there, 20, 25, and 35. And then P, 1, 2, 3, and 6. So we can realize that the members they have in common are the ones we put in the intersection, 5, 10, 15, and 30. So we solve the second question. A trader saved 200 Ghana CDs for three years at 12% simple interest per annum. What will be the total amount in the trader's account at the end of the three years? It's quite simple. You're going to go through this and then you get every bit of it. So we start off by putting down the information we have. Make sure you do that it's very necessary it helps a lot principal is 200 cities time three years rate 12 percent simple interest principal times three times time over 100 so simple inches putting the values 200 multiplied by the rate just 12 multiplied by years all over 100 so 100 goes into itself one goes into 200 twice so we have simple interest given by 2 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 3 therefore simple interest equals 2 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 3 is what 2 3 6 multiplied by 12 72 so simple interest is 72 Ghana cities Therefore, we find the total amount in the trader's account. Yeah, that is given by the principal plus the simple interest we have calculated. And that is 200 plus 72. That gives us 272 Ghana cities. 0 0.00. Yes. So we conclude by saying, therefore, the 
traders account at the end of the third year or at the end of the three years will be 272 Ghana cities make sure you give this concluding statement it's very important for such problems like this so we go to our next question our next question we see 4.56 multiplied by 3.6 all over 0 0.12 we are going to evaluate that so we start off by writing the standard form for each of these numbers so first number 456 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 2 multiplied by 36 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 1 all over 12 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 2 so we cancel 12 with 36 that gives us 3 the, now we go straight to the point and then multiply 456 by 3 so 456 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 2 and then 10 to the power negative 1 all over 1 multiplied by 10 raised to the power negative 2 take note of this indices if you have the same basis and they are multiplying you add the powers so we are going to add the powers of 10 to the power negative 2 and then 10 to the power negative 1 and after doing that we see that the denominator has another indices with the same base there 10 to the power negative 2 so we are going to add that up to what we will get there to get our final answer so before we proceed let's multiply 456 by 3 do that real quick and let's see what you get so 3 multiplied by 6 18 minus 1 3 multiplied by 5 15 plus 1 16 6 3 multiplied by 4 plus 1 12 13 yeah so 456 multiplied by 3 is 1368 and we are going to multiply that by 10 to the power negative 2 plus negative 1 all over 1 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 2 yes so we go ahead and then simplify what we are having Yes, yeah, so 1368 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 3 plus 2. We all know why it's plus 2. We all know why it's plus 2. We all know why. Yes, because negative multiplied by negative gives us positive so yes negative three negative negative two gives us negative three positive two and that gives us negative one so we are having 1368 multiplied by 10 to the power negative one we are going to write our answer in standard form we count the points backwards so we start counting that's a negative one so we move backwards one two zero one and then two so we have one point three six eight multiplied by ten to the power two so we can do it this way this is our final answer or we can decide to write one three six eight in standard form and then we do indices 
to get our final answer. So 1.368 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 1 multiplied by 10 to the power 3. Yes. You can also write 1.368 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 1. We're doing this is and then we get the same answer. 1.368 multiplied by 10 to the power 2. This is the same as what we had previously. Okay. So we move on to our second question. Question two. Amma scored 82, 74, and 90 in three tests. What mark should she score in the fourth test so that her average mark for the four tests would be 85? What was her median score in the four tests? So how do we go about this question? If we know how to find average of scores, we would be able to solve this at ease. Um, we don't know what she scored in her fourth test, but we know the average for the four tests. So we can write an equation to let a variable represent her fourth test. Yeah, so we say let x equals her fourth test or her fourth score or what she scored in the fourth test fourth score or any how you want to write it so 74 plus 82 plus 90 plus x all over 4 because number of tests is 4 or number of tests are 4 sorry equals 85 that is the average so 74 plus 82 plus 90 plus x equals 85 multiplied by 4 so we are simplifying this equation um we add we we add these numbers the 74 82 and 90 we do that and then we get 246 yeah so we say 246 plus x equals 85 multiplied by 4 we do it 5 multiplied by 4 it's 5 multiplied by 4 you can pause the video and do that you can also follow we do that and we have 340 so 340 so we make x a subject x equals 340 minus 246 it's obvious so we say x equals 340 minus 246 gives us 94. You work that out and you are going to get 94. So we conclude our answer by saying, therefore, Amma scored. 94 in her fourth test okay so we move on to the next part of the question so we are going to find the median score for the fourth test so to find her median score We arrange her scores from lowest to highest. Why do we do that? Why do we arrange her scores from lowest to highest? So that I'll be able to get the middle number. We know that median is the same as middle number. So we find the 
second and third number because the number of tests here are four so we find the second and third position of these numbers so reading reading from or reading the numbers in ascending order yes, so 74 82 90 and then 94 we get the second and then the third numbers since sigma f which is the number of tests she took over two and then sigma f over two plus one is two and three so if you are finding median and the number of um tests or occurrences as even number you find the you find half of that even number and then you find half plus one of the even number so the positions are two and then three therefore the second and third numbers are 82 and 90. Thus, to find the median number, we add these two numbers and then divide by 2. So, hence the median. is equal to 82 plus 90 all over 2. And that gives us 172 over 2. So we cancel 2 with 170. We cancel 172 with 2. And then that gives us that gives us what? Work that out and let's see. You can pause the video and work it out and see what you get. So 2 divided by 172. 2 goes into 17. yes yes so you see the long division method and then we get 86 so 172 divided by 2 gives us 86 so therefore median equals 86 so her median score is 86 that makes sense a big part of the question reads in the diagram we are seeing the ADS parallel to EG angle CFT equals 40 degrees and triangle BCF is isosceles. Find the value of I angle CBF, II angle DCF, and then the value of X. So we see 20 X there. So we are going to find the value of X. Okay, so we redraw our diagram. So let's look at some basic rules we can use to solve these angles. We know that the triangle is isosceles. That's what we are seeing there. So angles CBF and BCF is the same because it's an isosceles triangle. Yes, and then we we can we can draw a Z from this because AD and then EG are parallel. So we can draw a Z figure from there, and then drawing a Z figure, we can say that angle bcf and then angle cfg alternates so we use that rule to to solve our question so alternating angles we know alternating angles are equal so we can represent angle bcf with a because an isosceles triangle is the same as cbf so they alternate we are going to use that so we say let angle CBF equals A, as I said earlier on. And that implies that angle BCF is also A, isosceles triangle, because the triangle is, is isosceles. Yeah. After getting that, we can go straight forward and then say that
a is equal to 40 degrees since angle CBF alternates angle CFG. As simple as that. We are saying that A is 40 degrees. That means we are done with our first part of the question, which is angle CBF. Therefore, angle CBF equals 40 degrees. CBF equals 40 degrees. Okay, angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So we are going to use this to find angle DCF. So 180 degrees, yeah, angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. Angle, so this is um, telling us that BCF plus DCF gives us 180 degrees because they're on a straight line. So 40 degrees plus angle, that's what we are seeing there. So angle DCF is 140 degrees if we simplify that equation, as simple as that. So we go on to find our X in the triangle. So some of interior angles of a triangle, we know is equal to 180 degrees. So we form my equation and then we find x. So let's form the equation. That implies implies that a we represented a in the figure if you'd remember. So that's the equation. A plus a plus 20x equals 180. So 2a plus 20x equals 180. So a equals 40 degrees so we put 40 degrees in place of a so 2 multiplied by 40 plus 20 x equals 180 degrees so 20 x equals 180 degrees minus 20 into 40 so x we divide both sides by 20 to make x a subject because we are finding x so we cancel through so x equals 180 minus 80 20 by 40 80 all over 20 and so x equals 100 over 20 100 over 20 is what 5 we are done with this question X is 5. Question 3. Using a ruler and a pair of compasses only, construct triangle PQR such that PQ equals 8 centimeters, angle RPQ equals 90 degrees, and angle PQR equals 30 degrees. Measure RQ. Construct the mediator RQ. Let it meet PRQ at O. With O as center and radius OP, draw a circle. Measure OP. What is a special name for the chord RQ? Measure the radius of the circle. Calculate the circumference of the circle. Correct to three significant figures. Okay, so uh, let's start solving this question. Note, we are not going to draw this. The construction we are not going to do it to scale we are going to sketch it and then i'll give you an assignment from the construction you do it and then you give me feedback okay so this is how your assignment is going to look like let's go back to the question because we are going to sketch this we are not going to draw to scale i'm not going to draw the circle you are going to do this construction draw it to scale with all the measurements and the angles everything and then you do the mediator and then you draw the circle 
and that will let you know what kind of code is rq and then from your construction you measure your radius and then you calculate the circumference and then you give me feedback okay so let's let's put a sketch down it's more like um how you're going to go through this question so first we draw a line P pq pq eight centimeters so let's let's put down a straight line straight line let's, let's give it a color let's spice it up a little bit so there we mark here we mark here and then we mark here oh we mark here and then we mark here let's bring it here it's going to take much time okay so that's a uh, pq so we put our p here and then put our q here eight centimeters eight centimeters uh next next is next next part of the question our pq is 90 degrees 90 degrees uh you know how to construct 90 degrees so you put your arc the semicircle arc there then construct an arc here from this point construct an arc from that point construct an arc the intersection is going to be a straight line so draw that straight line into the arc please just not drawn to scale so don't look for precisions okay so we draw another angle at q which is 30 degrees 30 degrees okay 30 degrees at q so we put down a semicircle we mark our 60 degrees and then Put our semicircle, we mark our 60 degrees from here, and then we stand, we bisect the 60 degrees angle to get our 30 degrees. So we stand here, we bisect, we construct an arc, sorry, we construct another arc, and then from here, oh, we get a straight line so straight line to meet straight line to meet uh, okay so we label here as our r okay and then we measure we measure rq so you do that and then you see your measurement for rq construct a mediator of rq let rq let it meet rq at o so construct a mediator what this means is we are bisecting rq so we stand at r open more than half we construct an arc here and down there. This is the same at Q. Stand at Q, construct, we construct. Then we get a straight line. So let's make the straight line blue because it's a mediator. 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 Yeah. Mediator. 
so we label here as O yes so this is the, the main part of the exercise what I really want to see you stand at O the three a i i i you stand at o with o as center and then radius o p you draw a circle and then you measure o p which is your radius and then there's the special name for the chord rq so you get to realize that the circle if you make a circle you standing at o standing at o and then opening to q and then constructing a circle constructing a circle you get to realize that the circle will pass through yeah yeah so do that you do that and then you know and then you let me know how it went okay so you construct a circle you measure op you get a special name for the chord rq and then you find the circumference of the circle correct the significant figures question four a factorize completely six x y minus three y plus four x minus two so we go straight to the point and then we factorize three y out into 2x minus 1 we do the same thing for the other side plus 2 out into 2x minus 1 so we have 2x minus 1 2x minus 1 so we, our next step we have 2x minus 1 pick one of them and then 3y plus 2 and we are done a b part of the question The diagram above shows ladder AB which leans against the vertical wall PQ at B if PB is 8 meters. That is the length of PB is 8 meters, 8 meters. And the other end of the ladder is 6 meters away from the foot of the ladder, foot of the wall at P. That means uh, between the foot of the wall and the foot of the ladder is 6 meters. Find the length of the ladder AB. I guess we all know how to go about this question. We know which formula to use. So we draw a diagram from Pythagoras theorem. From Pythagoras theorem, we know that AB, which is the hypotenuse squared. Will be equal to PA squared plus PB squared. Yes, we know this. So AB will be equal to square root of PA squared plus PB squared. So we put in our values AB, length of AB equals square root of pa is six meters so six meters squared don't get confused here plus <laughs> eight meters squared watch it carefully ab equals square root of 36 meters squared plus 64 meters squared so ab equals square root of 100 meter squared same unit so we can add them so a b equals square root of 100 meters squared is 10 square root of 100 is 10 square root of meter squared is meters so a b is 10 meters therefore the length of the ladder is 10 meters don't forget your concluding answer don't forget your unit as well 10 meters is 10 meters so the last part of question four kojo had thousand 800 bags of rice in stock for sale in January. He sold two thirds of it. In February, he sold three fourths of what was left. We are finding what fraction of the stock of rice 
he sold in february and then in january and february and then how many bags of rice were left unsold by the end of february so we start by saying total number of bags equals 1800 the number of bags sold in january the number of bags sold in january we know it's two thirds from the question so two thirds of 1800 we are going to look for that two thirds of 1800 simply means two over three multiplied by 1800 so we find two over three multiplied by 1800 three goes into itself one it goes into 18 six and then we add the two zeros that gives us 1200 two multiplied by 600 it's 1200 so number of bags sold in january are 1200 bags number of bags left we subtract all sold in january from 1800 and then we get 600 bags we are going to use the 600 bags to calculate the number of bags sold in february because from the question the number of bags sold in february was three fourth of what was left so number of bags left is 600 so number of bags sold in february is three over four of 600 so we find that as well three over four multiplied by 600 four goes into itself and it goes into 600 150 times so four 50 bags sold in february we are not done concluding answer therefore number of bags sold in january and february we were asked to find that don't forget so we add number of bags sold in january to number of bags sold in february which is thousand two hundred sorry 1200 plus 450 bags and that gives us 1650 bags so 1650 bags were sold in january and february number of bags left unsold we subtract all the bags sold from the total number of bags that is 1800 minus 1650 that gives us 150 bags so the number of bags left on sold is equal to 150 bags a very nice word problem so yeah we move on to question five transformation okay using a scale of two centimeters two units on both axes draw on a sheet of graph paper two perpendicular axes o x o i o y for intervals negative 10 less or equal to x negative less or equal to 10 and negative 12 less or equal to y less or equal to 12 or we can read it as x greater than or equal to negative 10 but less or equal to less than or equal to 10 and y greater than or equal to negative 12 but less than or equal to 12. we are drawing these points triangle abc with point a 8 9 point b 8 3 and point c 2 3 and then we draw images of triangle a1 b1 c1 with point a1 8 negative 11 b1 8 negative 5 and then c1 2 negative 5 then triangle another image a2 b2 c2 triangle a2 b2 c2 with points here point a is supposed to be negative 9 8 so we are going to note take note of that we are going to take note of that this point here is please change it it's negative nine eight i think it's a typo negative nine eight four point eight two 
change it and then b2 is negative 3 8 and then c2 is negative 3 2 okay Okay, so we have our graph sheet, our x-axis and our y-axis all drawn, scale 2 centimeters to so 2 units on both axes. So we start by plotting our points. Point, let's start with first triangle A, B, C. A is 8, 9. 8, 9. B is 8, 3, and C is 2, 3. Okay. So, A is 8, 9. So, 9 will be between 10 and 8. So, our A will be here. So, we label that as A. And then our B is 8, 3. So, we have 8 here, and then 3 in between and then uh point c is two three so two and then three here let's get it done all oh. two three okay so we join the points Let's do a wall. Okay, good. Let me join this from here to here. Okay, let's extend this. Oh, sorry. Let's make this line. it is better and then to this point so we have a a oh sorry we have a b and c okay let's draw a1 b1 c1 a1 point A1 is negative sorry eight negative eleven eight negative eleven eight negative eleven is somewhere here okay and then B1 is eight negative five and then C1 is 2 negative 5 8 negative 5 8 negative 5 somewhere here it's negative 5 I think 2 negative 5 somewhere here somewhere here okay so let's join let's join our points to form another Triangle. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. And then this comes here. Good. Okay. Hope you are following. Okay. Now let's draw. Okay. So let's label our points A one. A one B one and then C one. Let's draw points for a last triangle. Negative nine eight. Negative nine eight. Negative nine in between. And then eight. Yeah. The point is somewhere here. Okay. And 
point B to S negative three eight negative three here eight there okay so point four somewhere here somewhere here okay the last point is sorry negative three two negative three uh negative three two okay so let's join our points see what we are having good okay so we label our points we have negative sorry a to sorry let's change it top in a A to B to S B two. Hold on. A to is H negative eleven. Eight negative eleven. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. A to S negative nine eight a2s eight, eight negative negative nine eight so this eight so eight okay so a2 a2 you have a two b two and uh, C2 also comes here. Okay, so the question is if triangle A to B to C2 is an image of triangle ABC under the transformation where A maps onto A2, B maps onto B2, and C maps onto C2, what is this transformation? What is this transformation? Look at the image of A to B to C2. Can you tell me what transformation this is? Can you see that? Triangle ABC has been rotated to form A2, B2, C2. Can you see that? Yes. We are seeing a form of a rotation. So, ABC has been rotated. Yes, it has been rotated to form A to B to C to. But what kind of rotation is this? Looking at the image of A to B to C to, we can say that this is an anticlockwise rotation. Yes, yes, this is an anticlockwise rotation. So it is going this way. This is clockwise, we know that. And so this is anticlockwise. So A to B to C to is an anticlockwise rotation of A, B, C. But in how many degrees has A to B or A B C been rotated to form A to B to C two? It's just ninety degrees. Yes, it goes like that. Just what? Well, just one one form of rotation. Ninety degrees. Ninety degrees. Ninety degrees anticlockwise. Also, we can. Um, get a form of transformation by looking at the points the points of a to b to c two and if we know um the transformation formulas we can relate it to the points of a to b to c two and then look and then get the kind of transformation a to b to c two is so looking at the points 
realize that we realize that a2 is negative 8 9 negative 8 oh sorry 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 negative 9 8 so this negative 9 8 rotating x y or if you have an if you have a point x y and they are forming 90 degrees anti-clockwise rotation 90 degrees anti-clockwise rotation anti the uh, image becomes negative y x our point x is 8 9 so our point a is 8 9 8 let's let's get a new page let's get a new page so 90 degrees we have we have a point x y 90 degrees 90 degrees anti-clockwise anti the image of this point will be negative y x so realize that point a which is point a which is um eight nine eight two as negative nine eight it's the same for b and c so as this is 90 degrees anti clockwise rotation b as point b is um eight three eight three and then the image of b2 is negative three eight it's the same thing for c yeah so you do that for c and then you realize that triangle a to b to c to s a 90 degrees anti-clockwise rotation of a so that's what we are seeing here okay let's go to our final question oh there's one thing one more thing find the length of a b a b length of a b so we use our scale two centimeters to two units that to moving from moving from this point to moving from this point to this point is two centimeters so we even see it in the labeling so a b that a is here nine and then b is on three so nine minus three gives us a six so a b equals six centimeters take note you can also find a b the length of vector a b this way um we know that point a is eight nine and then point b we know that a you know that point a equals eight eight nine and then b equals eight three yeah we know that vector a b equals o b minus o a so this is o b eight three eight three 
minus O A which is eight nine. 8 minus 8 is 0, 3 minus 9 is negative 6. So we have AB vector AB equals 0, negative 6. So finding the magnitude, magnitude of magnitude of AB is as a root of 0 squared plus root of negative 6 squared which gives us root of 36 negative 6 squared is 36 so root of 36 and that is 6 centimeters so you can find it this way by solving this calculation or you can find it from the graph like we did previously okay let's go to the last question our last question which is uh question six the table shows a distribution of max of students in a class test max frequency we see that from the table Using a graph sheet, draw a bar chart for the distribution. Calculate the mean mark for the distribution correct to the nearest whole number. If the pass mark is 3, what is the probability that a student just in that random field? Okay, so we have a graph sheet drawn. And so let's start putting down our bars. So the first score is 1. And the frequency is 5 so score 1 as having a frequency of okay so we have six scores frequency of 5 so let's let's get a shot shape awake 5 so 5 will be here Oh, where did the shape go? Oh, the shape is missing. Let's draw the shape again. Five. Uh, five, 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 five. Let's reduce the shape. Then bring it down. Yeah, I think this is okay. Here is a little bit. Oh, oh. what is happening? Okay, let's let's draw our next shape. Let's draw our next bar. Uh, second score is two frequency six. Okay, so two score two frequency six. Good. Good. 
good okay next score is three frequency five okay three frequency it's the same frequency as one good next score is four frequency three so three four yeah Oh, this is what is happening to our ship. Okay, let's increase this. It's Okay. Uh, next, next call is five frequency four. Frequency four. Oh, why the color change? Blue. Okay, and then finally six frequency two. Okay, let's draw that real quick. Good. Okay, let's see. Okay. So that's a budget. B pass the question calculates the mean mark of the distribution corresponding to the nearest whole number. Okay, so we are going to find our fx sigma fx. So these are marks are represented by x. So x here. And the frequency is f. Uh, f okay so um yeah the next chart yeah, as so we draw a table so let's let's put on a table and then yeah, so we draw a table for for this to find the mean we are going to calculate the mean mark for the distribution according to the nearest whole number. So there's a, there's a max frequency and then uh, fx, f multiplied by x, you know. Okay, so our mean, mean mark, we know that mean, mean equals the sigma, the sigma here, sorry. The sigma uh, 
so we have sigma fx over sigma f okay so i mean is 76 over 25 76 over 25 this one Okay, so 76 over 25, we know that um, 25 goes into 76, how many times? 3 times. 25 multiplied by 3 gives us 76. 75. So, uh, this equals 3 whole number, 1 over 25. And we know that 1 over 25 is the same as 4 over 100. Yeah, 2. 4 over 100 is 0 0.04. So we have 3.3.04. 3 so 3.04. So nearest whole number is 3. So the mean mark is 3. Mean or average. So let's, let's look at the table. Average. Average is 3. Okay, let's see the next question. Uh, if the pass mark is 3, what's the probability that a student chosen at random field? A student chosen at random field, the pass mark is the pass mark is 3. So those who filled are those who had 2 and then 1, or those who scored 1 and 2. So those who scored 1 and 2, the frequency is I'm of students who had one in two are uh, eleven. So eleven students filled. So probability that a student is not random filled will be equal to so that a student. Chosen at random field from the question is 11 over the frequencies, the total frequency is 25. So, probability is 11 over 25. That is if the pass mark is 3. So, if pass, pass mark is greater than three this is a probability so this is a probability that is student field 11 over 25 okay so please try your possible best to uh, go through this and then see if you have any challenges with any of the solutions do you add it to the construction question you let me know i get the feedback and then we talk about that in our next lesson and then we move forward